Hi, everyone. This is Chris Meglin again with the Nerd Extravaganza podcast, and I'm here with Brian Edwards, who's been a sculptor for McFarland Toys, who has his own Kickstarter going on called Monster Nice. And here he is. Hi, guys. My name is Brian Edwards, and I created a game called Monster Dice, miniature figures that you actually roll. Very cool. From what I get from the games and from the very cool dice you have, you're aiming at the family market, right? Um, absolutely. Uh, this game was inspired by my children. I have a 10-year-old, I've got a 5-year-old, and I now even have a 1-year-old. Um, so I really wanted to make a game that I could play with them, um, get them off of their touchscreen devices, and you know, get something tactile in their hands, really rolling and playing face-to-face -face with their dad, you know? Very cool. So you told me that you had dice first and you decided to throw some games on top of that. How did that happen? Okay, yeah, so uh, originally I created a game that was uh, more something that I really was into. I was had special abilities, all these different cards, all these special things, and I was playing it, and it really fell flat because of the take that element of that uh, original design. And so my son, he, he didn't like whenever I made him re-roll. He didn't like whenever I said, no, I'm going to take your results and you're going to take mine. So there was this kind of back and forth, and, and the feeling from the game didn't give give the players uh, happiness. So I went back to the drawing board, especially when my daughter uh, was getting very uh, into rolling the dice, and she wanted to play but couldn't read yet. So I went back to the drawing board, started a new game, um, and I focused on the fun parts, which are rolling the dice, rolling them fast, uh, getting a high energy into uh, into the game. So... That's where the first game uh, redesign called Sugar Rush came about. And that game revolved around each player getting four monster dice. And they're not these big ones here. They're the smaller size, which I have in this box here. So you take each player gets four of their monster dice, and they roll them as fast as they can, trying to be the first one to get four face-up monsters. And if you get four face-up monsters on the candy card, and here's an example of the candy card, then you get to take that candy card. So you'll just place them right on this side if you're the first to get four face up, or if the other player gets it, they take the candy card. So that was the really fun game that came about once my daughter started wanting to play the game, and it really took off from there, and we started to create other games. One of them was actually inspired by my son, who was stacking the monsters. So instead of rolling dice, you know, kids will play however they want to play a game. Uh, he was stacking them up, and he was putting cards in between them, and that's how we came up with the game called Swipe Out, which you stack monsters on top of each other, you put a card in between them, and then all you have to do, without touching the monsters, is knock the card out from in between the monsters. So that was actually really cool to find a game uh, you know, that was really designed by my son. That's very cool. This is a bit of a Jenga for a hand up. Swiping the tablecloth out from under the silverware. That uh, absolutely, yeah. It's definitely I, the Jenga reference. I mean, I, that was one of my favorite board games when I was a kid, if you can call it a board game. Um, but I, I like that dexterity aspect to that. And, like, can you get it out? You know, and this really uh, it intensifies it because you can put cards in between each monster or do it however you want. So you can really up the uh, level of difficulty. Um, once you get the one card out, you can really start putting two, three, four and it's kind of an infinite challenge. Definitely. So on your Kickstarter, you said you've been working on this for years. So what was the inspiration? What have you been you know, thinking about in the back of your mind for this? Um, yeah, so uh, it initially, initially came about when I was working um, on, on freelance contracts for different toy companies. So I used to sculpt different toys, uh, models for them, and then you know you have this downtime in between. And so... I was just honing my skills, just practicing um, sculpting within the computer space with polygons and everything. And my son came over and he asked me, can you make a werewolf? Because that was like his favorite creature that he used to see on, you know, Scooby-Doo and all the other uh, spooky uh, cartoon shows. And so he, uh, I started sculpting, and that's this guy right here. Um, I started sculpting the werewolf, and, I'll, you know, I was like, this is really cool. I really like what we had going there. So I had it 3D printed. And once we had it in our hands, uh, we kind of found that it was more of a game piece than it was like a little figure. And we were 
rolling them and playing with them. The actual, the first design of this was more um, like a marble with a flat bottom. So that was the initial design of Monster Dice. Was It was more of like marbles that you rolled and, and, and landed like that. So uh, that that really is how Monster Dice was born. And you've been fine-tuning it ever since. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, every, uh, you know, you, you put things in that you think are going to be awesome, and you're like, oh, this is going to really increase it. And then you play it, and then you kind of refine it. So you take out the little things that aren't, uh, you know, aren't the fun elements. What is the fun? So you strip it back, and you say, so, you know, you always want to get back to the simplest uh, version, especially when you're dealing with kids. Um, if it takes more than four minutes of rules, uh, you know, the kids are walking off. So what have you learned about playtesting rules, by the way? Okay, yeah, so um, I work as a gymnastics and parkour coach, and parkour is like ninja warrior training. So I teach these kids how to climb ropes and do backflips and all of these other really fun athletic things. So I have this great group of hundreds of kids that I get to see every week, and I got to play this game with them, you know, on the regular. So that's where I really was able to find, like, you know, you know, are they interested in the game? Are they, uh, you know, it, it, are the rules simple enough that I can teach it and then they can play without having, um, you know, me to reiterate, you know, little nuances to the rules? So that's really how I came about making this very kid-friendly game um, out of these out of these uh, miniature monsters. Very cool. So I have three games already with these, and I bet you can think up some more. So do you think if your monster dice is more of a, a game the engine than just a single game? Absolutely, yeah. Um, monster dice, I believe, to be more of like the building block, building blocks of play. So these kids can play with them however they want. You know, you put you put these into the hands of a ten year old, they'll play the they'll play it by the rules. They'll want to play very competitively with their friends. Um, you put it in the hands of a five-year-old, and she wants to play them, you know, as like little characters talking to each other, and then maybe they, they roll across the table and do that. So there's so many different ways that I've seen kids play with them, and I was actually really inspired by some of the, the ways that they, they, they play. You know, you, you can't imagine the different ways. Uh, when you tell a kid, uh, can you, okay, what you want to do is roll the monsters face up, and they take the monster literally take monster and they put it face up on their head and then they roll it like that. I'm like, what, what are you, what are you doing? You know? So, so kids, you know, they'll, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's really, it's amazing to play, to have the opportunity really to play it with lots of kids. Um, I don't imagine a lot of game designers have the opportunity to play it with this many kids like I do. So I, I kind of felt like this is the Avenue I want to go. I, I have this great market that I can uh, target and really test with. And so that's that's where I, I, I shot for. I'm kind of that six and up age range. What kind of background are you bringing to this Kickstarter? Um, yeah, so I have been making toys for um, a few companies, the mainly McFarlane, and I'll show you a couple of the things that I've gotten into Toys R Us before. Uh, I sculpted the Master Chief here. So here's the Master Chief. And this is from the Xbox Halo uh, avatar. So, like, when you log into uh, Xbox and you've got that big-headed guy, this is kind of what they were going off of. So it's the kind of the bigger head. Um, so, yeah, I sculpted this guy. I've also had the opportunity to make a couple of the walkers from The Walking Dead. So this is Michonne's pet where she chops off the arms and chops off the mouth so they can't hurt her and carries all their loot. So these are these were cool because... I really got to dig in deep and um, and sculpt. Even though they're, they're, these are tiny little miniatures as well, um, I got to dig in deep and, and sculpt really cool details inside of these little uh, monsters or little miniatures. And yeah, so yeah, those are those are four of the ones that I've had in Toys R Us. And from that experience, I really learned, um, you know, if you're doing a licensed product uh, like these things, they have to be very exact and really the way that uh, the uh, the company that, uh, that we're licensing from wants them. You know, you can't kind of deviate from the way. So that was something I learned from there. And I also uh, really learned how to work uh, in the pipeline um, of creating toys. So I got this great 
connections with um, a master mold maker that's been working for McFarlane for over 20 years. So he was the one who actually molded these little guys and um, put in a silicone mold bar mouth. So I had these great prototypes uh, to share and, and play with kids because kids are rough. And uh, the 3D printed versions of these guys would not withstand the, uh, the amount of rolling and falling off the table and tossing, chucking, all that good stuff that kids do. Um, but these, these monsters I've been rolling for over two years and no damage, to be honest. I, I had little to no damage on any of these monsters, which is incredible because <laughs> they've, they've been tortured. <laughs> Very cool. So your Kickstarter is going on right now, right? Yes, we are live. Uh, you can check it out at monsterdicegame.com. And um, we are we just hit over 50%, which is super exciting. Um, it is my first Kickstarter, which means that any and all support, any eyes on the prize really matter. Um, I've been showing it to everybody locally. I've even had the opportunity to share it on TV. Um, so those are some really great... Oh, that's right, with the ABC Toy Box, right? Yes, yep. I was featured on ABC's The Toy Box, which I kind of uh, call it Shark Tank for Toys, where kids judge your toy. And, um, yeah, I had this great opportunity to be on there showing the game, um, and they told me uh, if it was good or not. And, unfortunately, I didn't make it uh, very far on the show. You can watch it for yourself. I was on episode two. Um, but it was a fantastic experience, and I got some really stellar reviews. And uh, to be honest, I was kind of surprised in the results, but because when they were playing the game, I, it was all smiles. It was just awesome. So. Very cool. And when does your Kickstarter end? Kickstarter ends the theme of the game, which is Halloween, Halloween night. So the theme are you are these little monsters, and you're rolling through the neighborhood trying to collect the most candy on Halloween. So we decided to run it in monster season, you know, where everybody's excited to dress up and, and, and spook and scare people. I wanted to create a game that uh, was a little bit more friendly, that didn't, it wasn't gory and didn't have that with the monsters. It really is the kids of those legendary monsters. So you're these little werewolf and little mummy and little vampire. And um, on the Kickstarter, you can get the base game for $24, free shipping to the USA. Or you can upgrade and get the glow-in-the-dark monsters, which are really something special because the front half glows and the back half does not, which means you know exactly when they roll face up. And that is a really cool, which means you can play in complete darkness, you can play camping, you can play anywhere with the glow-in-the-dark version. So I definitely highly recommend checking these out. These are limited edition, exclusive to the Kickstarter. So... Check that out at monsterdicegame.com. Well, hey, Brian, thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. And you have a great week. Hey. And thanks again, buddy, for hanging out with Nerds Over Cancer Podcast. Woohoo! Thank you.